So how many of you have lived in another country? For some reason I expected more hands than that. Uh, okay, so a couple of you. My name is Haley, by the way, as most of you guys probably know. And when I was eight, my mom remarried. And for the next year and a half, I lived in a town called Pedro Escobedo in Mexico. It was definitely an eye-opening experience. Obviously, I can't fit the entire thing into a five-minute presentation, but I'm going to do my best to give you guys a clear picture. And the way I'm going to do that is to talk about living conditions, what we did for work, and what we did for fun. <laughs> By the way, this is challenges. It's a main theme. <laughs> We started our journey in Camas, Washington, so the very <laughs> top of the states, and we drove through Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas before finally reaching Mexico. It took us a total of four days. I remember <laughs> my mom had taken me out of school but didn't tell me why, and I was used to moving around a lot, but usually it was down the street. So after like an hour of driving, I was pretty confused. <laughs> Upon arriving in Mexico, I remember I asked where the bathroom was and I was led to an outhouse behind the house and I, I, saw, I thought they were joking. There was no running water there, no electricity, and <laughs> at night that outhouse scared me so much. There were spiders in every corner in there, like terrifying. Uh, since there was no running water, we also had to do our laundry by hand, which was also a lot harder than I thought it would be. I remember my mom sent me to the store once to pick up body wash for her, and I ended up coming back with laundry detergent, which isn't really helpful if you're looking to wash your body. She was pretty upset about that. <laughs> uh, everyone in my family had jobs, including myself. My mom, she cooked all the meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything like that. And she did laundry and did dishes and stuff like that. And my stepdad, Carmen, used to work at a factory uh, in Mexico. It's, it's actually really interesting. He hand carved all the fountains out of stone and it's something really popular in that small town. He used to come home with some of the stuff and it, it just amazed me. He also worked on the farm in his free time. We had a farm in our backyard. We had a donkey named Oreo. I don't know why I named it, so. We had a peacock. I don't know where the peacock came from. We had a lot of pigs and a lot of chickens. And sometimes my brother would help out with him, you know, on the farm and feeding the pigs, catching one of the little pigs if it got loose. I don't know if a baby pig has a name, but yeah. Uh, my job was to basically run errands, which got easier once I learned Spanish. I didn't come home with laundry detergent anymore. Uh, during the weekends, it was kind of my free time to do whatever I wanted. And since we didn't have electricity either, it, it was hard to find other things to do aside from sit inside and watch TV like I was used to doing in Camas. My brother and I found this cool lake down the street from our house and we used to go there and hang out with all the other kids a lot. And it was interesting because we didn't know Spanish that well and the other kids didn't know English that well, but it, it didn't seem to matter when we were all playing and hanging out. Okay, so to recap, I kind of talked about the challenges of living in a house with uh, no running water or electricity. I talked about how we all contributed, and I talked about uh, what we did for fun when there was no TV or entertainment. So I've learned a lot from this experience, 
uh, it kind of taught me that you don't need to have a lot of money to be happy and that you don't, even though something seems too hard to overcome in the beginning, you will find a way to adjust and be happy again.